who is entitled to house allowance in Kenya? Join me in this discussion as we shed more light on house allowance, how best it is calculated, and most importantly, how corporate staffing services supports employers with labor laws issues with regards to employment and even HR consultancy. I am glad to be joined by our lead HR consultant, Mr. Paminas, who will be shedding more light on this subject. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, Mary. Great. We are talking about house allowance, and uh, my question would be, is it mandatory to begin with? So house, house allowance is provided for in the Employment Act, mm -hmm. CAP 2007. Mm -hmm. So that's the current law in place. Uh, the law is being uh, up for review, but as of now, that is the law. Mm -hmm. So as far as the law goes, an employer has three options as far as the house allowance goes. Mm -hmm. So number one, you can provide actual housing. Mm -hmm. So that is why if you find employers in the agriculture sector and some of them in hospitality, mm -hmm. they actually provide houses for their staff. Mm -hmm. So that's option number two. Mm -hmm. Option number two, Mary, is you as an employer, part you can indicate part of the employment to be house allowance. Mm -hmm. So in the pay slip, if a staff is earning, let's say, 50,000 Kenya shillings, you can indicate uh, 10,000 as house, house allowance, allowance and then 40,000 is basic pay. Mm -hmm. The third option is if you don't want to provide, um, to indicate house allowance in the pay slip, how you word the contract is that the pay you give to the staff is consolidated. Mm -hmm. So the courts have ruled that a staff who gets a consolidated gross salary mm -hmm. receives also uh, house allowance. House allowance. Yes. Mm -hmm. So those are the three options. They are provided for by the law. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not upon uh, my own interpretation, mm -hmm. it's what the law provides. It's what the law provides. Yes. How then is it calculated in the Kenyan context? So that's a good question. Mm -hmm. So the Employment Act does not give a percentage. Mm -hmm. And they don't say that Mary needs to be paid 20, 30,000 or 50,000. For house allowance. So what they have provided is uh, a threshold. Mm -hmm. The courts are the ones who provided a percentage. Mm -hmm. So they've said anything between 15 to 20 percent of the employee's basic pay mm -hmm. can be a fair uh, house allowance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as of now, that's the figures that we are working with. If you want to provide housing allowance in the pay slip, look at what the staff is earning mm -hmm. as their basic pay, and then 15 to 20 percent of that mm -hmm. can be um, can be termed as house allowance. Mm -hmm. But the best option, if you ask me, is just to indicate one salary, mm -hmm. consolidated mm -hmm. gross salary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that one because. The issues of salary it can be a bit emotive mm -hmm. because who says that 15 to 20 percent is fair? Mm -hmm. well, you never know, the courts can change tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But if you indicate consolidated and it's the courts that have ruled that, then um, the employee, if they want to allocate 50 percent of their salary to house allowance, mm -hmm. it's up to them. If they want to do five percent, it's their decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. I know when it comes to labor laws and um, matters to do with how employers handle uh, relate with employees it's a very sensitive area that uh, most employers are equally need to trade with caution yeah. so how then do corporate staffing services come in handy to support employers on matters to do with labor laws so there are two types of clients that work with us mm -hmm. so you'll find a client who wants to engage corporate staffing on a project basis so we come on board and we set HR system and structures for you. Mm -hmm. So things to do with the HR policies, employment contract, job descriptions, KPIs. So you make sure that we, we leave you in safe hands. Everything is sorted as far as HR compliance goes. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, things reviewing like your employment contract and ma making sure that the way is, uh, they are awarded protects you and also takes uh, interest of the employees. Mm -hmm. So that's category number one of clients. The others who come and say, Paminas, I want a long-term engagement uh, with you, so can you take over our HR uh, docket? So they don't want to hire for one reason or another, they may not be wanting to hire full-time HR personnel. Mm -hmm. So there we come on board and we act as their HR mm -hmm. manager. Mm -hmm. So we'll be making regular visits depending on uh, complexity of their business, mm -hmm. and that way we act as their HR uh, manager. Mm -hmm. Remember right now HR is a regulated profession in Kenya. Anyone you are hiring, whether as a consultant 
or as a full-time HR manager, they need to have a practicing license. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, any decision they make is invalid. Mm -hmm. So the beauty with us is myself and the rest of the team and even the firm, we do have the practicing license, mm -hmm. which we renew on a yearly basis. Mm -hmm. So that gives assurance to employers and our mm -hmm. clients mm -hmm. that indeed they are dealing with people who are certified and people who are up to date mm -hmm. as far as the labor laws and the labor matters goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And... Um, for the client who we support on a monthly basis, we go beyond compliance. So we look at issues to do with performance management. Mm -hmm. We look at issues to do with training. So that one check you are paying us, mm -hmm. you are able to give, you are able to get uh, the full benefits mm -hmm. of um, having a HR uh, a consultancy firm supporting you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, that's quite interesting, and uh, it's important for companies, organizations to ensure that their house is in order as far as HR docket is concerned. Yes, Mary, you brought out a very important aspect. So for a long time, we've seen uh, employers or businesses putting a lot of emphasis on finance and ICT. Mm -hmm. But HR is becoming a risky area. Mm -hmm. So today, if I terminate you and I, if I don't follow the process, you'll go to court. And we are seeing companies, big and small, being fined, equivalent mm -hmm. of 12 months salaries. We are paying this person 100,000 mm -hmm. simply because of the way you added your contract mm -hmm. or the termination. Mm -hmm. The court will rule that you pay this person 1.2 million shillings. And it's something you could have avoided. Right. But even beyond that, I don't want employers to fear the courts. You know, why there is a certain way you can learn your business. Mm -hmm. If you put in the right systems and structures, that will help in terms of the employee productivity, and at the end of the day, it will also help you in terms of revenue. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to have employers come in just because they fear they'll be taken to court. Mm -hmm. For me, I believe having the right structures and systems makes your business better. Mm -hmm. And the main beneficiary of it will be you because mm -hmm. of the increased profit, revenue, and having a satisfied workforce. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, thank you so much for sharing with us. I believe someone watching this video has found it quite insightful. Thank you, Mary. Great. Indeed, when it comes to HR and just ensuring that you get it right with regards to your employees, this is where we come in handy as corporate staffing services. Feel free to reach out to us and we will be able to advise on matters to do with HR consultancy and even ensuring that you get it right when it comes to your HR department. And also, when it comes to ensuring that in that, in that particular contract, the terms and conditions are duly followed to the letter. We encourage you to reach out to us and we will be able to come in handy with our support. Thank you so much for watching this video. See you in the next one.